Thank you for joining us. Um, this time of year is such a special time. I love um, everything that goes along with Christmas. You know, we get to celebrate the birth of Christ and we have all these traditions and, and things going on. Um, and there's the shopping and all this stuff that makes Christmas what it is. But we need to remember just to stop and worship. And um, not just during these times of service, but get around with your family, turn on some worship music and just worship our Lord. And let's remember why we celebrate Christmas, amen? So join us as we sing. God bless you, everyone. It's so good to be with you once again. My name is Jake, and this is my beautiful wife, Jill. And this is Hello. Wednesday night, Thrive Church, and you're joining us online for the millionth time. And yet here you are being faithful uh, to coming together and getting into God's word. And we thank you so, so much for that. Um, this last Sunday, we had our missionaries um, Jim and Esther Missouri, all the way from Chile, Santiago. They did a tremendous job sharing the gospel message, and we hope you guys were able to watch that. If not, go back and check that out because it's just part of our our reach as we're trying to build the kingdom of God. And I know we're known for Ethiopia, but we support many, many missionaries all over the world. It was an awesome message about how we're all born in Zion when we're born again, and it's a powerful word. So make sure you check that out. And just like always, we're just very grateful that you're with us tonight. And I want my wife to greet you and to say hi. Hello. Well, thank you. Um, we, we are so grateful that you join us and um, we get to watch along with you and just celebrate what God is doing in our lives and um, celebrating what God is doing in your life. Amen. So like, like we said last week, we started this brand new sermon series called Arrival and that's just a powerful thought about how our Savior, Jesus, came. And it's what we're celebrating in the month of December is the birth of our Lord and Savior. And not just the fact that he came and the story that goes along with it, but last week we talked very specifically about this sermon um, title that Jesus, he has no rival. We talked all about that. We talked about uh, the, the definitions of the word rival, which is inside that word arrival, and the first definition was competing for the same objective or for superiority. We also related that, that whole thought to, you know, God's objective, what he wants to do. And the reason that he sent his, his only son, Jesus, and the reason we celebrate his birth 
is because he has an objective to see every soul be saved and that the enemy tries to be a rival, which is the second definition, to be equal or comparable to. And that's why the message was called Jesus, he has no rival. Because as much as the enemy strives and tries to be a rival, to be an enemy, to be the opposition, really there's just no comparison. But the Bible tells us that the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy but Jesus has come to give us life and life more abundantly. We talked about that message last week as we talked about the word arrival and what it means to have arrival. And we're going to continue that, that thought tonight as this is the second, the second message within the sermon series. And I, if you're taking notes, I want you to write down the sermon title tonight. It's simply called this, Hope, the Rival of Despair. Come on, write that down, church. Hope the rival of despair. And I just want you to know that no matter how discouraged you might be or how if you're dealing with depression or anxiety, um, just the idea of that word despair. So many people are going through that, um, not just because of the pandemic. I mean, it's just always with us. It's part of the objective of the enemy is to overwhelm us and to just make us feel just like we can't make it, whatever we're facing in life. And then you add the pandemic we have been going through, um, it's just overwhelming for people. And, and that's what Jesus came to do is to be a rival of despair through the hope we have in Christ. So we're going to be talking about hope tonight and how it's the antithesis. It's the opposite of what the enemy's objective is. And he wants us all to be in deep despair. He wants us to kill. He wants to kill, steal and destroy our life. But the abundant life that Jesus has come to give, a, uh, give us, it's all found in that idea of hope. Come on, someone say, he's my hope. He's my hope. Amen. Amen. So Amen. I want to give you a scripture right off the bat, and that scripture is found right here in Proverbs 13, verse 12. I love this scripture. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Now, what does that mean to you, church? Hope deferred. Deferred means something that's not making it to its intended destination, something that's put off, something that's held back. So hope that doesn't make it to the heart makes the heart sick. And if you look at the world we're living in, that's that's one of the most accurate descriptions of of almost everybody you know, people, you can call it many different words, anxiety, depression, um, hopelessness. It has so many different words, but there are people who are basically walking around hope sick. And we've all been in, in, in we, when we don't have that in our lives, we can get sick physically. What starts mentally can manifest physically even in our bodies. If you don't, if you're not sleeping right at night, if you don't have peace in your life, I promise you, if your mind is in turmoil and your heart is in turmoil and, and hope is being deferred, the enemy is trying to keep hope away from your life and from your heart, you are going to feel it in every area of your life. And that's, I, I, none of us wanted to go through this whole COVID pandemic. None of us ever thought that it would happen in our lifetime. And yet so many people um, are manifesting in their life and in their bodies Basically, hope deferred. They're they're heart sick and they're they're angry. They're upset. They're filled with worry. They're having trouble in their mind. Their their thought life, and they have good reason to struggle because people are uh, people have been sick. People have lost loved ones. People have they've lost their jobs. Struggling financially, um, hoping hoping that the government will step in and maybe assist or or, or do something. But the tr the truth is. We know our hope is in Jesus. It has to be in Jesus. And yet we see what happens when hope is deferred from the heart. Uh, it, all you have to do is look around. Uh, if you're brave enough to watch the news or to read news articles, um, you're seeing a hope and a heart sick world that's just hopeless and doesn't have the Lord. So I don't want to overwhelm you with, with a bunch of statistics, but there were a few things that we were reading and we were studying together and it's kind of eye-opening, and I want to share a, a few with you right now. The first one is this. Um, Jill and I, this hits home because we have four school-age students. Um, three of them are teenagers, and we have our youngest. And I read this, and I was, I was shocked. And I had no idea what before the pandemic what it was like, but this is, this is something that just shocked me. And it says this, the national average of U.S. students that are failing right now in school, right now at this moment, that number is 40% nationwide, 40% nationwide. 
And I had no idea. I, we researched a little bit more and tried to find the uh, national average before COVID, before the pandemic. And uh, that number that before all this was going on, the national average of students that were at a failure level was at 8%. 8%. So that's just, Huge jump. yeah, that's, that's insane to think about how, how 40% of our young people in school right now are, are, are failing. And of course, you know, um, I want to read another statistic again. It, since the pandemic began, here's that number again. 40% of adults are reportedly struggling with mental health issues. 40% of adult, adults, that's almost half of everyone you know. And then listen to this number right here. 75% of young people are struggling with mental health issues. And that is just, that's insane to think about church family. Young people have never been in the position that they are before trying to learn online and trying to be, you know, and, and this is not sometimes... Uh, teachers and school districts, uh, schools get, you know, they get criticized and they've never been through this situation before either. So their, their administrations are doing the best they know how to do. Teachers are doing the best they know how to do, but kids are really, really struggling because learning is, is, it's better when it's tactile and it's in person. But do you remember those numbers? How many of the adults in America, 40% are struggling with mental um, health issues and 75% are struggling out of the young people. And we believe a lot of it has to do with not being able to be in school. Yeah, and even um, just tonight, right before we were um, getting ready to record, we got a call from um, our kids' high school saying that the counselors want to get on a call with all the students because they're very concerned about the mental health of our kids and um, their whole world has flipped upside down um, along with everybody else's but just the normal so things they can depend on going to school the normal routine has just changed and so the school district is trying to reach out um, to help these students so it's it's not just the kids it's it's every age this pandemic is affecting everybody at every level another statistic is this since the pandemic began, suicide rates are up 145%. And this is not a message to um, create doom and gloom or to be negative or to make your heart feel heavy, but we are acknowledging that um, with all of these statistics and, and all of these metrics, the way that we're measuring what's taking place and what's happening, we have a message of hope that we're going to share. We're going to get into God's word, but it's just, it helps us understand when we when we hear stories and, and something really unique happened to me. Um, I try not to get too much into the news because it can create a negative effect in my life. And when I wake up in the morning, um, I want to get into God's word. I want to pray. But there are some times where you'll see on your phone a, a, a news um, notification, whether it's about what's happening here in Colorado or around the nation or around the world. And I happen to see um, this was this was last week. I happened to see a news story that came up on my phone and I just couldn't help it. I clicked on it and it's a true story. On uh, November 30th, I want to share this, and we're going to put her picture up right now. On November 30th, a 34-year-old uh, mother from Sacramento, California, Shanna Pringle, drove to a parking lot of a closed-down theater, and she took her two-year-old son, Noah's life. She took his life, and then she took her own life after recently losing her home, losing her job, and then on top of all of that, with all of the struggles and the life issues she was going through, she found out that uh, without having a job, without having a home, without having any money, she was then diagnosed with, with COVID and began to fall ill and really didn't have anywhere to turn. And, and it's, it's she, in her in a, a, a black Dodge uh, caravan, she drove to an empty theater, a parking lot, and took her son's life and uh, took her own life, and then they they found they found her, um, and that is just such a just a snapshot of 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 what people are struggling with. And again, why would I share a story like that? Why would I, you know, it, I'm not trying to be you know sensational. I'm not trying to um, do anything other than that. It hit me so profoundly on that day. I couldn't get her face, and especially her son Noah's face. Um, out of my mind, I just kept meditating and I kept, it put me in a very prayerful 
place where I was just thinking about Thrive Church and thinking about we don't live in California or Sacramento, but I was thinking about how many people that we're surrounded with in our community that are having the same issues and the same struggles to where a mother who loves her son would just do the unimaginable. And I was reminded of John 10, 10, the enemy, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that can happen to anybody. It can happen to any one of us. If we allow hope to be deferred from our heart, if we allow the enemy to keep hope from us, um, we can all go to a dark, dark, yeah. desperate place. And, and so I'm thinking about this woman. Her name's uh, Shanna. And um, I'm thinking about her. This is what's really crazy. On the same exact day, Pastor Bo, he uh, calls me and I'm inside the church building and he calls me and he says, hey, son, I need you to come out and I need you to help me unload my car. I got a bunch of food that I just picked up and over $600 worth of food and we're just going to unload it um, in the in the kitchen. That's a very normal thing for us. We're always getting donations and we're always Angie and her ministry and Debbie Porter and everybody who helps with Thrive Kitchen. Um, we're constantly trying to be a blessing in our community. So a lot of food is coming in and we're always unloading pallets and cars and trucks, everything you can imagine. So that I didn't even think twice about it. I go down to Pastor Bo's car, we start unloading food, and I see a black Jeep pull into our our parking lot. And she parks right by where we're unloading Pastor Bo's car. And Pastor Bo and I start talking with this young mother, and uh, her name um, was Shanna, the same name as the young mother from Sacramento, California. Um, and what had happened was that she saw us unloading food in um, the parking lot, and it wasn't one of the days where we, we where we had the food bank going. It was in the middle of the week, and she just began to share a story and how she had young kids. And uh, what she was really asking for is the hours, what day our food bank was, and she saw the food. And Pastor Bo and said, you know, we're going to give you a bunch of food right now. And we started on just loading the back of, of her Jeep with, with food and just um, – Pastor Bo said, Jake, I want you to pray for her. I want you to speak life over her. And, and, you know, this is not to pat ourselves on the back, but immediately, I didn't even tell Pastor Bo this, to know that there was a young mother that had the same name as a mother who took her own life and took her son's life, but the same name, even a black car pulling up into our parking lot. Um, what I appreciate about that, that mother's heart is, she was looking for help and she was she was coming to the church. Um, she had heard that we were giving food away and she was trying everything she could to be a good mom. And that's one of the hardest things to do is to ask for help and to uh, take care of your kids. But she says, you know what? Um, I never thought I would ever pull into a church parking lot and ask for free food. She had a job and she had lost her job and she was really struggling. And it was exactly just like that story uh, that I read in the news that morning, even from the same name of the mother to the same color of car. Where, but this lady in Federal Heights pulled up and said, you know what, I'm just so grateful. And this is an answer to prayer is what she said. And this is going to help my family. And she said, I can come back in a few days. And we said, we insisted, no, we loaded her up with so much food. And she was bawling. You can see in the picture, she was crying and she just she just was overwhelmed with thankfulness and gratitude. And what I see in that is I see I see all of us. I see uh, where we have choices, where um, how we respond to hopelessness. And, and, you know, she could have stayed home. She could have used drugs like a lot of people are doing when they're having uh, mental health issues. Um, uh, she could have she could have just continued to go in a path of negativity in her mind. And she says, I don't know what to do. So she gets out and she drives to a church where she's looking for for help. And really what she got, what we were able to do as a church without patting ourselves on the back, without making it about uh, us, we were able to give her in a word hope. And hope is powerful. It's the rival of despair. She didn't leave with a trunk full of food. She left with a heart 
full of hope because that's what the enemy was trying to do to her, to me, to you, to all of us. He's trying to keep that hope as far away from our hearts as he can. So we grow sick, sick in our minds, sick in our hearts, sick in our bodies uh, to the point where we do the unimaginable. We do things that we would never imagine ourselves doing. And yet here is this sweet little mom in our community coming up. And I'm so grateful that we were able to do that church. And that, and that's, that's the message right there. We know what the enemy's trying to do. We know his objective. Uh, we know what God's objective is. He, the, you know, hope is the rival of despair. So we're going to talk about that. We have two simple points tonight. And I want to give you the first point right now. I want you to write this down, church. Jill's going to share the first point. Okay. Put all your hope in the Lord. That's what we have to do. Come on. Somebody say it with me. Put all your hope in the Lord. Not just some of your hope, but all of your hope. Just like Shanna, this this little mom in our community um, saying, I don't know what to do, but I'm just going to go where I think they can possibly help me, which is the church. And uh, we have to do, all of us, we have to put all of our hope in the Lord. We can't put it in our, you know, in our government. We can't put it in ourselves, in our jobs. We can't, we know how quickly we can lose a job. Uh, it just can happen to any single one of us. And we can't put our hope in this world or the things of this world. So it's so clear in scripture that we are to put our hope in the Lord. And the first scripture we want to share with you is Proverbs 23, verses 17 and 18. Go ahead, hon, share that. Burn with unrelenting passion as you worship God in holy awe. Your future is bright and filled with a living hope that will never fade away. Come on, somebody needs to hear that tonight. Your future is bright and filled with a living hope that will never fade away. And I love the first part of that verse about those two words, an unrelenting passion. You know, when we're down and out, when, when, when hope is deferred from us, we have to passionately seek God. We have to passionately worship. When we don't feel like it, when we feel like everything around us is growing dark and we feel like we're getting in that spiral of depression and, and, and with that negativity in our minds and that worry, everything we deal with, that's where God's word helps us, that unrelenting passion God wants from us, not just in the good times, not just when we got a bunch of money in the bank account or when our kids are healthy or we got a raise at work. That can't be when we have unrelenting passion it has to be even in times where the enemy is trying to defer hope from our hearts that's when we push into god and we have to believe his word that the future is bright and the living hope we have a living hope that will never fade away so i have another verse that we want to share with you i love this one it's one of my uh life verses but I, we're sharing in a little bit of a different translation it's jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7 go ahead read it hon Blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord and whose hope and confident expectation is in the Lord. So that, that is such a, a, that's a lot of information in one verse, especially that translation. That translation. If you want to be blessed, what, we, what do we have to do? We have to believe. Mm -hmm. We have to trust in. We have to rely. And then we have to put our hope in the Lord. And I love that last phrase, especially in this translation, and a confident expectation. Yeah. That's what hope is, church, a confident expectation. Now, if you've been serving God for any amount of time, you know in your life that God always shows up in his timing. Yeah. You never know how he's going to come through with a miracle, with what you need. We have countless stories of how God has healed our children and provided for us um, uh, you know, materially, financially, he's brought food to our doorstep. And what that does in your life is it, it creates a confident expectation. You might not know when and you might not know how, but if you have hope in your life, if the enemy, you know, he's trying to keep it deferred and away from you. But if hope, if you passionately serve God and you, you do what? You believe, you trust, you rely on him. You can begin to grow and build that confident expectation that God is going to come through to you. That's what hope is. So I want to give you this truth right now. I want you to write this down, church. It's powerful. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Come on. I know that's a, that's a familiar statement, but it's so true for what we're dealing with, what we're going through. 
I don't know what tomorrow holds. I, we don't know. We have no idea what blessings may come or what, what tragedies await us. We have no idea. And when you're going through a dark time and a tough time, it just feels like it's probably more negative, more hopelessness, more despair, because that's what you feel when you're in the middle of it. But you have to know, even though we don't know the specifics of tomorrow, we know who holds tomorrow. There's nothing outside of the power of God, the sovereignty of God. And that's where that confident expectation, the more you believe, the more you trust in, the more you rely, that hope is going to grow. And you can trust the one who holds tomorrow. Even when tomorrow is unknown, we serve a God who is known. So don't let go of that. Let your faith grow. Let Have a confident expectation. So again, we only have two points. And the first point was this, put all your hope in the Lord. And point number two is this, share all your hope with others. That's powerful, church. Come on, write that down. Share all your hope with others. Don't hold anything back. Be That's where the Holy Spirit becomes such an important part of our life as you might sit there and say, I don't feel like I have all that much to give. You know, sometimes people think about food or, or, or money or material possessions, but it's it's more than that. It's our love. It's our words. It's every little gesture. If we allow the Holy Spirit to help guide us and, and let us know the best way to share the hope that we have with others, you know, sometimes we look at people's problems like homelessness or somebody who lost a job and we immediately disqualify ourselves and being able to remedy that situation because it's so big, it's so large. I don't have a home I can give you. I don't have a job I can give you. I don't have a whole bunch of money I can just put in your hand. And and we allow the enemy to use that, you know, the, the, that, the specifics of that to keep us from sharing the hope we can share. And we can't do that. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit to help us figure out, well, God, what would you have me do in this moment? What would you, what would you have me say? Some of the best things are not solving everyone's problems in life. We can't even do that most of the time, but just letting them know that there's a God that loves them or letting them know that you've gone through a similar situation and God brought you through it. There are ways that we can share the hope that we have with others. So we, I want to read a scripture. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, and I just want to add to that too. When we share, um, hope of what God is doing in our life or just standing on the promises of what is in God's word. When we stand on it and speak it, it increases our faith huge and it increases the faith around, um, and people, you know, the church family, when they hear you speaking those things, you know, their faith gets encouraged. It's true. When you choose to, to just confess your hope and to live in your hope, people see that and it's not being showy. It's not no. trying to, to, to be false in your life, but I, everybody knows we're all going through a hard time. And for the ones that are declaring their hope in God, the ones that have a positive confession, the ones that are just leaning into God is, is one of the many ways that we share our hope with others. So I, we're, we're going to read yeah. Romans chapter 15, mm -hmm. verse 13. Okay. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. There's so much word that we're sharing tonight, and these are kind of longer scriptures, but we want you to write them down and to get them into, into your heart. I love how it talks about how the power of the Holy Spirit helps us abound in hope. And I love that word, overflow. Come on, somebody say overflow. Overflow. You know, I, I think about um, we we recently we were celebrating in our house and we got some of that Martinelli's kind of apple cider and uh, our kids had brought it in. And sometimes um, they're not always the most careful creatures, <laughs> our children. So, uh, you know, I thought it was my youngest one, but it wasn't. It was Gavin, our, our middle uh, child. As we went to open that thing, it kind of exploded everywhere. And uh, we were laughing about it. And we tried to get it to the sink, and uh, we, it, it was just—it it just went everywhere, and it, it was just—it got all over everything. And I just think about that as an example how mm -hmm. God has called us to to overflow in other people's lives, and it was sweet. It was it was good, and it was we were there was just joy in that moment as we were just frantically trying to uh, deal with the overflow, but it was getting everywhere, and that's what hope can be in our lives is it can um, it can be explosive. You can you can just I see that, and and I know I always honor Pastor Bo and Teresa, mm -hmm. but when I'm with them, I just there there's 
there's not a person that they're talking to or a conversation that they're having or a task that they're doing that they won't stop and just overflow and greeting someone, saying hi to someone, um, telling someone, oh, hang on, you know, let, let, I'll get back to this. And, and they run to their trunk and they get, you know, um, food or cookies or whatever uh, that they've picked up from a place because they want to bless people. And it's good to overflow. One more time, somebody say, I'm called to overflow. To overflow. Come on, church, get that into your heart. You know, we're called to overflow and, and to abound in hope. That's God's word. I want to share one more scripture with you. It's Psalm 23, verse 5. We know it well. Go ahead, share that, hon. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. There it is again where, where we're anointed by God. And we're not even in a place where we would want to be, where the Bible says that that the, the psalmist David says, you prepare a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. But in that place, that's not comfortable. It's not a place where it feels positive or relaxing. But that's where we find ourselves in this pandemic. What happens? You anoint my head with oil. And here it is. My cup overflows. We are called to overflow, church. That's how we share the hope that's within us. Okay. You know, God wants us to just... That I love we, you know, Christians talk an awful lot about the concept of anointing. I'm, you know, that, that person's so anointed. That church is anointed. That preaching is so anointing. And that's wonderful. It's wonderful to see people minister in, uh, under the weight of God and to be used in a powerful way. And that's all part of it. But I promise you, you know, it's not just us preaching with passion. It's not just us worshiping with passion. But what does the anointing do in our life? According to God's word, it, it causes us we're called to overflow. And I believe that hope is one of those things that God wants. He anoints us so that we overflow with hope in other people's Amen. lives where we can just be a blessing. We say this all the time at Thrive Church. You're blessed to be a blessing. You're not blessed to keep it to yourself. You're not blessed to take it right up to the top of the glass and to say, you know what? I want as much of that for myself. God just, you know, even though life is messy, the overflowing of God's goodness, the anointing that's on our life that causes us to overflow hope and God's love, his grace, his mercy, you know what, that should be uncontainable. It should be explosive in our lives. I love the name of our church, Thrive Church. We're, we're called to do this. I want you guys to write down this last truth right now, church. Write this down. We're called to thrive and grow, and we're called to, an, we're, we're anointed to overflow. I'm going to say that again. We are called to thrive and grow and we are anointed to overflow. Amen. That's that's a word for us, church. God wants us. He's anointed us so that what's in our life overflows to other people. That hope that's in us. Amen. And if if you're allowing, I'm going to say it one more time, if you're allowing the enemy to keep hope from your heart, do not let him be successful in that area of your life. Have that passion, that unrelenting passion the scripture talks about. Press into God like never before. Trust in him. Rely in him. Um, believe in God. And have that confident expectation that God's called us to have. You don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. So church, we hope that this message has been a blessing to every single one of you. And what I want to do right now is what we always do at this point in the service. It's where we just have the opportunity for people who are away from God to pray a prayer of salvation. People who might not be close to God, maybe at one time you're walking with God and you're not anymore in your life. You turned your back on him. Maybe you've never, ever surrendered your life. You've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. If that's you right now, I just believe the Holy Spirit's working in your heart. Uh, right now, I, I know that you're just, you're listening to these words and you're saying, I need to ask Jesus to forgive me and to be my Lord and Savior. You're never going to find hope outside of Jesus. You can look for the rest of your life. You will never find hope in a bottle. You'll never find hope in drugs, illicit affairs. You'll never find hope in, in, in anything outside of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can spend the rest of your life looking, and you're just going to get further and further away and more and more heart sick. It's when you give your heart to the Lord. It's when you surrender and begin to live for him. Do you have your life just be filled with that hope that you're searching for? Yeah. So what we want to do right now is we want to pray a prayer of faith. If that's you, church, we just want you to 
pray with us. If there's anyone who wants to pray that right now, I want you to bow your heart before God and repeat this prayer after me and say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. I need you. I need you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I believe you died for me. I believe you died for me. So that I can have eternal life. So I can have eternal life. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. I ask you to be. I ask you to be. My Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For dying for me. For dying for me. And for setting me free. And for setting me free. All that I have. All that I have. And all that I am. And all that I am. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. I will serve you. I will serve you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Take a moment, church, and just celebrate Amen. Any person that has prayed that prayer and just just know that that's, that's why we do everything we do. Every event we do for the church, we just want people to, to, to just come to know Jesus and to surrender their lives to pray that prayer. And if that was you and you prayed that prayer, we have a little booklet that we want to get into your hands. And it's simply called Now What? It's a seven-day devotional that that you do right after you pray that prayer and you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. We want to get this booklet into your hand. And the, one of the best ways we can do that is to have you come by the church or you can call us. You can even call the church office at 303-428-9535. And the reason we want to talk to you is because we have a team of people that if we know who you are and we know who prayed that prayer, we can follow up with yeah. you. Uh, not just put a book in your hand, but check on you and, and make sure that you're becoming a disciple and growing in the Lord. So we really, really want to connect with the people who prayed that prayer. We want to get this booklet in your hand and we want to continue to walk down that path of discipleship with you. But right now, we, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We know it's a busy time of the year and for you to make time for God and make time for his word, you're honoring God and God is so pleased with that. We hope that that, that, that hope itself will just exponentially yeah. grow in your life and that uh, that you'll just continually be blessed. I'm going to have Jill pray a prayer of, of blessing over us. Okay, let's pray. And let's pray. If you're struggling right now, um, just not having hope, um, and you feel kind of like you're at your wit's end and you don't, you just are struggling, let's pray for you. And then let's pray for um, the church as a whole, okay? God, we come to you right now, Lord, and we just surrender our hearts and our minds to you. God, and some of us are struggling. We're struggling um, just to get by. We're struggling just because of what's going on around us, and we're missing hope. God, we just pray right now that you would just put your hope on every child of God, every person hearing this. God, that they would just feel this peace that surpasses all understanding. God, let it fill their heart and their mind. God, let it be so clear that you are right there and you're encouraging them in this moment. And God, for all of the church family, we just pray, Holy Spirit, that you will protect us and keep us safe and our families continue to work on our our church family that's struggling in their bodies lord continue to work on their bodies their minds protect their hope and their hearts and their families god i just pray you supply every need that they have emotionally physically spiritually and mentally and god we just thank you in advance for what you're doing on our behalf god we trust you and we love you and we thank you we can continue to grow every day with you, Lord. We just ask that you go with us this next week. God, until we can come back together again, we love you and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to mention very quickly, church, that uh, in a couple weeks, on December 23rd, Wednesday, December 23rd at 6 p.m., we have our Meet Me at the Manger special drive-by service. And normally we do Christmas by the fireside, but this year we still want to get together. We want to do it close to the to that time of Christmas. So on Wednesday, December 23rd, 6 p.m., it's going to be in our parking lot. We're going to have a live nativity scene. We're going to have the fire pits and hot cocoa. It's going to be awesome. And then at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Pastor Bo and Teresa will be reading the Christmas story the way we do every year. So whether you come by in person or you watch us online, that's going to be our way of getting together during that, that time of Christmas. So we don't want you to forget about that. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we love you more. God bless you, everybody. Once again, it's Pastor Jake. And I just want to take a moment and thank everyone for your faithfulness and your giving. 
You know, we understand that giving is an extension of our worship. It's what God has called every single one of us to do. As a matter of fact, I think about a verse that we all know, John three sixteen. I know it and you know it. The word of God tells us that for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only son. And we understand that giving is totally connected to, to love. You cannot separate the two. I don't believe you can love without giving and without being selfless. That's what God modeled for us by giving his only son. And I see that in Thrive Church. The way we give, you know, we, we just give all glory to God because we want to give in such a way where, where we, we see the connection between giving and love. We love our community, so we give to our community. We love our kids in Thrive Academy in Ethiopia. So we give without reservation. We give selflessly. And that's just so connected, those two thoughts of love and giving. So thank you, Thrive Church. We just want you to know that as you give to the Lord, God's going to take what we give and he's going to bless it and he's going to use it to reach souls for Jesus. So one more time, if you'd like to give online, you can always visit our website at wethrive.org and you can hit the donate tab. And you can also text the word, all one word, we thrive to 77977. And our church is also open throughout the week. We have several people who come by and they, they give their offering that way. But we just want to thank you again so much because you give so much. It just shows that God's love is in your heart. God bless you, Thrive Church.